Welcome to today's session. Today is our last lecture in this term and the last topic that we have for C++ as a whole. So it's about advanced C++ topics and it's a continuation of what we started last week. In particular what we will be talking today is three topics. First of all we will have a look how object-oriented programming in C++ can be implemented under the hood. How is it done? How is it working? And we will try to mimic the behavior of object-oriented programming therefore in C because at the beginning C was actually used to implement C++. And then we will have a look at modern C++ which is kind of a little bit of a journey of interesting C++ extensions. Yeah, so we will look at various of those features and lastly we look at an extension of uh, templates which is metaprogramming which allows the compiler to compute certain results at compile time. So a little warning here, everything in this lecture is more advanced than anything covered before. You should not use those kind of tools and concepts until you understand them. They are really powerful and as you know with great power comes great responsibility because you may hurt your overall progress by making code that is not properly working when you don't understand the concepts. So note that you don't have to understand everything for the exam or as part of this module. So check the learning objectives at the beginning of the slides on slide 2 because there is not too much that you should grasp or must grasp of this lecture. But I think it's really great to get an outlook of what else can be done in C++ and what else is done in C++ in practice because you may need it in your job. Good, so what we learned in terms of object-oriented programming was the principles of object orientation. Encapsulation, which meant to package data and functions together in classes. Inheritance, to extend classes changing some that allow you to change these derived classes by changing some behavior. We talked about polymorphism, allowing to substitute objects with same interfaces at runtime. And in fact, all these concepts can be used in C. And they can be implemented in C. Like I said, they were early on C++ compilers. They actually compiled the C++ code into C code that then had been compiled with existing C compilers. Some object-oriented programming language still use this idea, such as Vala, which is kind of a C extension. Good, let's have a look at how we could use some object-oriented programming in C. We remember we had a classes person and we had a class student, which is a person. We had the functions print details and get matricle and the data we had age and name. So in C, well, what we need to do to encapsulate the data members, what we could do, we, we create a structure, person, right? And we call the structure typically person t using a type def to make it a bit easier to access. And then we had two data members, age and name. And if we want to have a student, which is a person, how we do the inheritance is that we provide a super class, of course, which is a student is a person, so we embed this super variable of type person t. So therefore, all these members, age and name, are now part of, of student as well. Now we want to add a new data member, which is matricle. And this new, this new structure is called student t. As you can see, a student is in fact a person. Well, you could say it consists of a person, but we placed it, this data members at the beginning for a very good reason, as you will see. Function encapsulation is a little bit more tricky in C. So we had we have to do first a forward declaration saying there is a struct person and a struct student. Let's say we create a function table, in short FTBL function table, and we put down all this kind of functionality methods that we want to be supported by person. So we put in this table destroy because we have to put some kind of destructor. And what we want to destroy, well, we have to provide an argument, the kind of the this pointer, right? So the this pointer must now be converted as an argument. So it becomes a struct person star. And we have print details. And you should be able to print the details of a person, right? Which was our method here, print details. As a student, 
a student contains or is a person so it contains all the methods of a person but additionally we, it shall contain um, the get matricle method which we embed over here yeah, and now we have to modify our structures. So far our structures encapsulated only the data members. So now we pretty much simply add the person function table and a student function table into our structure of a person or structure of a student. So that's a very simple way of doing this encapsulation. Now let's have a look how we implement a person. Well, we, we have to create the methods. So, for example, if you create a method person print details, it needs to get a person. We could say this uh, variable p could be called this. That would be very similar to what happens in C++. But here we just call it p um, because we know what we are dealing with. So when we call this method, we want it to be printed. We, in a person destroy functionality, we have to free the allocated memory. We just free the whole structure. There's nothing more to be freed. So next we create something that is that will hold the addresses the address table for the methods. We call this a virtual address table and this will be our function table class or well structure instantiated. So we will actually create an object. We call this person v address. So before virtual address and we embed here the we have to put down the destroy and the print details um, method, so to speak. Here in C, they are functions, and we, we register them with our just created functions. So the destroy function is person destroy, print details is person print details. Good. Lastly, we have to build a constructor. It is a little bit like a factory that we learned the pattern last week. So in the constructor, we want to store the age and the name when we create a person. Um, immediately and then we return a person pointer to a person. What we need to do is we have to malloc um, the structure, then we assign the age, we have to copy the name and lastly we have to assign, very important, this table. Uh, this is our virtual table and we have to assign it to our vir global virtual table that we created the object over here. Good. Um, let's have a look at our implementation of student now. We, we want a student to print details and, and student print details in fact now takes a person as well but we know when this method is to be called this should be a polynomial uh, method so it that means um, a polymorph method means we, we should allow a person and when a person is called that actually is a student, it should print additional information like the matricle number. That's what we do here. We know this method or functionality here shall only be called when this person is in fact a student. That's why we cast P to be a student. And then from a student we can also print the matricle, which is the last element we add here to the list. We, we also had a new function here, student get matricle, which returns the matricle number of the student. Now we create our new function table, student, uh, virtual addresses. We have, this embeds our parent, which was from person. We had to put a destroy and our person destructor, our person destroy functionality is still good. So we can just free whatever the pointer points to. But in print details, now we change it. Here we change it to student print details, okay, because Every object of type student is also an object of type person, but this person object, if it ever called the print details function, should print the student information because it's a polymorph function. And lastly, we add get matricle, uh, which points to, of course, student get matricle. In the student constructor, we take a age, a name, and a matricle, and well, it pretty much replicates the previous operations. The table is now pointed to a student virtual address table. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we change here as well in this parent object and the table to point to our student v address as well. So we have to, in this implementation, change the table and the super table 
as well pointing both to our student v address here. Okay. Um, lastly, let's have a look at the main function, how we can use now these objects. Well, we can say we have a person P, we call person constructor, we create Fritz, he's 35 years old. We can say P table, which is the function table, calling the function print details of P. That will, of course, print, call now person print details. That's why we assigned it over here in the structure, printing the name and the age with person. Now we create a student, Miriam Studies, which has the matricula number 3712. Here we say student table super, because we want to really call our print details functionality from the super class. And print details was part of um, a person and not only provided by student. That's why we have to use super. And But this actually will now print the details using student being a, be, that this object s is of course a student because we overwritten it with the functionality student print details. So here's an example how the polymorphism worked. So we create now a pointer to a person and we convert our student pointer to a person pointer. And from this person we, we call from our table the print details. So this, in fact, under the hood, calls student print details, as you would assume. At, at, at the end, we destroy our object and, uh, well, our parent object. All right, so it shows a little bit how this can be used. This is one of the many options to realize object-oriented programming in C. More, some implementations are more sophisticated. The key idea really is that you need to place inside the structures the objects, the data, and the pointers on the right position, such that the first element is basically always the element for the super class, basically. Because once you cast a student function table to a person table, the layout of this person table will be as expected in memory. And therefore, those two can be easily casted which is what we did in this case here. We casted our student pointer to a person pointer and from there we called the table print details. But this in fact used our student v address where we had changed per print details to student print details. So if you want to try out the code, of course it's available in our repository. And here I just open it again. So we see for person we do print details, then we do for our student print details, and lastly, we for our casted person print details. So let's compile and run the code. So we compile it. Let's just ignore the warnings here and run it. And as you can see, we, we indeed call person Fritz35, and then two times we see the student because that's why we changed the V table. So in fact, polymorphism here works. Yeah, and you can toy, of course, with this code further to get a little bit more experience. And I think it brings really well together the concepts of C and C++ and kind of is a bridge between the, those two worlds.